Good morning, Mario, and good morning, Switch fans. Whew, we've got quite the episode today because the new Pokemon game is basically unfinished and the internet is starting to go crazy. I gotta fill you in on exactly why this game basically isn't physical at all anymore. Like what did they do and how we're gonna talk all about it. Plus one of the best Switch controllers just got better with a super awesome upgrade. And there's some new Switch games to discuss and some good Pokemon news as well. So what's going on everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. We got a well-rounded full show that is gonna take you to the highs and to the lows of today's Nintendo news. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and smash that like button if you enjoy the show. Thank you so much for watching and for your support. And I'd love to hear your take on today's topics especially this Pokemon debacle in the comments down below. Yo, 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 I'm actually doing a super cool live stream in just a little bit. So make sure to click the link in the description down below. It's a big direct style presentation from Thunderful and Luke Skywalker. Mark Hamill is hosting and I'll kind of be giving my reactions to all of their releases. And I'm super hopeful for new SteamWorld. I love that series so much on Switch and there's gonna be awesome announcements. So make sure to join me, I'd super appreciate it. Even if you just say hi, link in the description down below. It's kicking off at 2 p.m. Eastern. All right, now you know me, I'm a positive guy. So let's start with some really good news. The Hori Split Pad Pro is one of my favorite ways to play Switch. Y'all know I'm a pro controller guy. I love my fixture playing in that portable pro. But if I'm gonna go with something else or I don't wanna spend the money on a pro controller, I've always recommended the Hori Split Pad Pro. In fact, they're probably my favorite Joy-Con, not for the color, but because they're just chunky, right? It feels like you're holding a pro controller, but Joy-Con style. Well, those are great for Joy-Con play, but they cannot work when the system is docked for TV mode. Now Hori has fixed that with a new accessory, the Hori Split Pad Pro Grip. Now that's a mouthful, but hopefully not a wallet full. This little piece of plastic allows you to use these chunkers when you're playing on the big screen, which I think is great. Now the little accessory is wired and it doesn't have a release date, but it makes sense because you are gonna be only using this from your couch for TV play any other way. They just attach straight onto the switch, but it builds functionality for a control method that's really cool, but had limitations. Let me know if you've ever used one of these chunker Joy-Con controllers or if they're interesting to you. If you have any sort of hands bigger than like a Barbie doll hand, this probably will feel more comfortable than the normal Joy-Con and I definitely give them a Switch Force seal of approval. Mm. I blended the tea and the honey better than a Starbucks ever possibly could. It is delicious today. And I'm also delighted to say that Chuchel is coming to Switch next year. Now, what is this game? Well, it's right up my alley, right? It's bright and colorful. It's kind of chaotic and it's a really cool puzzler that was previously on PC and it's from Amanita Designs. I really like this team. They made games like Machinarium and Botanicula and also Chuchel, which is a bunch of crazy little creatures doing crazy little things with some very innovative and interesting puzzles. It'll be a nice addition to Switch sometime next year. No date is given, but it's being published by Red Deer Publishing. And if you're looking for something abundantly charming, but that still has like difficulty and awesome game design, I definitely recommend checking it out. Taking deep breaths because we're approaching the disaster segment. But first, let me tell you the good stuff about Pokemon BDSP. Very strange acronym, but these games seem to be souped up in the post-game content department. Nintendo announced today that Aramanus Park is being added to the game, a place where after you enter the Hall of Fame, you can go and seek out legendary Pokemon. Now this is a really cool park because it'll give you access to a bunch of really cool mons and the way that you access them is super nifty. You have to grab these magic slates around the world and the slates are effectively old cartridges from old Pokemon games, but like built into the Poke World lore. It's really, really awesome. I love their design. And I think this is a super nifty touch for players that are gonna just blaze right through the mainline game and get to the Hall of Fame and then want more content. Plus, we've got a lot of reports that the post-game battles in Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl might be the best in the series and might be the most difficult. They're being claimed to be incredibly hard, incredibly challenging, and a really good barometer of your Poke power once you complete the main game. So if you are someone that likes to hunt for the best team, likes to soup everything up, and likes to go the distance, then you're in great shape because Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl have you completely covered for your post-game play. And let me just say one more time that these Game Boy and Game Boy Advance cartridges that help summon the legendaries in Romanus Park, such a smooth move Nintendo. You sure were rough in a lot of other areas. We made it. Now Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, 
they didn't quite make it. These games are basically unfinished in terms of what's on the cartridge. And this is an incredibly rare and strange situation for Nintendo, a company that rarely needs day one patches, let alone a day one patch as substantial as this. Now, I don't want to go ahead and make any assumptions, but I will note that this game was developed out of the main team. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl was not the main line team. And the game is missing so much on the cart to the point that like, it's hard to call this a physical game anymore. Today, we got confirmation that there will be a day one patch actually pushed out tomorrow, eight days before the game's release. And it'll be over three gigabytes in size, which is a substantial amount. And depending on your internet situation or lack of internet situation, you may be sitting for quite a long while just to get the title screen. Okay, this is where it gets really crazy and I'd love to hear your take in the comments down below. I'm very understanding of developer situations, especially as of late, but y'all didn't put the animation for the title screen and the end scene on the cartridge? This day one patch has many things, all right? It's got bug fixes and adjustments, which is what a day one patch typically should be. But this day one patch also adds the intro animation, the title screen. What? Now, if that doesn't bother you, well, okay. But how about all that Ramanus Park stuff I just told you about? Guess what? It is part of this patch as well. You can't do Ramanus Park unless you have the day one patch. Post Hall of Fame content, including Ramanus Park, is also part of this patch. So is the Grand Underground. So is the Super Contest Show. So is the Union Room, and so is the Mystery Gift Communication features. They've got all the multiplayer stuff pretty much locked up in this patch. And oh yeah, multiplayer isn't even gonna be complete with the patch because only two players can participate in the union room and they're gonna be adding a future update to expand the player limits. They also note that they'll be adding the greeting and capsule decorations functions to the union room post-launch and bringing trading via the global wonder station in Jubilife City and activating the Coliseum feature in Pokemon centers all post-launch. Now that is a lot of stuff to bring to your game after the cartridge have already been printed and you might be asking why did they not just put the intro cutscene on the cart now one theory is that nintendo is really spoiler crazy here meaning they're crazy about any spoilers getting out and they did this to limit spoilers for pokemon getting on the internet for a pokemon game that was released like ages ago i don't i don't know this is a lot of features and i understand wanting to limit things so that they don't get out to the internet, but I don't understand making things harder for your players and making things harder for your paying customers. Because what if you don't have fast internet? Or what if you were planning on playing this game on vacation and won't have a connection at all? What if you don't want to download four extra gigs and you expect you pay $60 for a cart, the game will be there? Well, no, that's not the case. Basically half of the game is stuck up in the online servers and you have to bring it to your system with this day one patch. Now, maybe it's a bit overblown. Maybe this is just the reality of the modern era, but with so many features stuck in this day one patch from a lot of the post game content to a lot of the multiplayer functionality and knowing that they're making future updates to really give us all the multiplayer, it just feels a bit half baked. I'm not sure again what the exact reasoning is, but regardless, the result is that we have an unfinished cartridge when we pick up Pokemon Brilliant Diamond or Shining Pearl. And to me, that's not great. It's not great at all. Now, Pokemon BDSP could end up being great. It could end up being a super fun time and the additions like Ramanus Park could be series show stoppers. Plus those really hard battles will appeal to the hardcore longtime Pokemon fans. But I wanna know how you feel about getting a game that ain't all there. And I wanna know how you feel about Nintendo not even putting the intro animation on the cartridge, please sound off. Let me know how you feel about this, whether you're picking up Pokemon or not. Like think about your game, right? If this was gonna be Breath of the Wild 2 and they were like, yo, the intro in on the cartridge. And if you wanna ever do any of the dungeons, you gotta download them. Would that be offensive or upsetting or bothersome? Or would it mess with your plans? Like, I don't know your internet situation, but this could really mess with your plans. So I had to tell it to you. I had to bring it your way. And now it's your turn to let me know how you feel. My opinion is big oof, but now it's time for your opinion with the daily poll. I post these in the evening on the community tab, so make sure to check that out. Turn your notification bell on so you're always part of the conversation. This is one of the most difficult polls I've ever put out there. You can only keep one and the rest vanish and won't ever be made again. 
four choices, 2D Mario, 3D Mario, 2D Zelda, 3D Zelda, wow. All those have great merits and great games and great reasons to exist, but 60% of you said 3D Zelda is the way to go. Breath of the Wild 2, you're gonna get it because you picked it. And then 25%, myself included, picked 3D Mario because I think I'm just, I'm just too attached to the mustachioed man and I don't want a world where he can only run left to right that seems like a fate that would be ill-fitting of such a fantastic mascot. Now, 2D Mario gathered 8% of the vote and 2D Zelda 6%. I really like 2D Zelda. I kind of considered 2D Zelda for a second just because how great Link to the Past and Link Between Worlds are, but no, I understand. Like Breath of the Wild, Not Green Time, Majora's Mask, Skyward Sword, Twilight Princess. Like there's a lot of really good ones. So it was between the 3Ds and the 3Ds, but I, I can't lose Mario, man. I can't lose Mario. I understand you wanted to keep Link around. This was a great poll and y'all are a great, fantastic family here on GMM. I'm so proud to have your support every day and to enjoy Nintendo news and my passion for the platform together. So stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, stay positive out there. You're more than halfway to the weekend, so good job. High five, give yourself a pat on the back or on the head or on the belly, depending on where you need it. And until next time, everybody, stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, stay positive out there. I love you a lot. Switch fours, out.